Salutations everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be discussing more about the naming system of Deep Woken's alchemy, into what does matter, and my overall personal stance on the subject. We will be looking at the new secondary effects of certain ingredients, and to finish everything off, I will be giving you my personal guide on where I farm for alchemy ingredients. In case it ought to be mentioned, this video is a continuation of my previous alchemy video guide. In case you haven't seen it yet, I suggest that you pause this video and skim through the previous one first. Thanks, and let's get started. Because I want to start off this video with a controversial topic, we're going to go back into the potion naming system. In the previous video, I stated that the prefix of potion titles, or their categorical names, are stratified due to the, quote, majority of an ingredients, end quote, in the potion. What I intended to explain from this is that it's based on the cumulative potency of the potion. If a majority of a potion's potency, whether or not it has other ingredients in it, is mentioned in the categorical name of a potion, then it will be the strongest effect that you're going to get out of that potion. As an example, pretend that we put three plum fruits in a potion. Let's say we made ten of these, where five of them come out with the categorical name grueling, and the other five come out with the categorical name strengthening. The strongest effect of the grueling potions will be in its grueling effect, while still having small elements of a plum fruit's other effects, like strengthening. The same can be said, but as an inverse, with the strengthening potions from plum fruits. The strengthening potions effect will be the strongest, or the most potent, in those potions, whereas the grueling effect will still be present, but just not as strong as the strengthening effect was. As for the suffixes of potions, the alchemy page of the Deep Woken Wiki actually goes pretty in depth with the titles and limitations of some potion suffixes. I'll be posting a link to that site in a little bit. I will also be showing these suffixes they found and putting them in part of this video's list momentarily. It is still being determined whether or not the Apothecary, Exterminator, and Wild Alchemy talents change the suffixes of a potion. I messaged Par, or Melon Sensei, the creator and updater of the alchemy system about this. Before release, I was told that it was purely RNG based. As of now, I'm not too sure and would like a Dell developer to confirm it to me first before telling any of you what's what. Finally. Let me give you all a breakdown on the effects of each categorical name potion. I will be also listing out whether or not these effects take place when you ingest the potion or drink it, throw the potion, or are able to do both. Appalling potions instantly take reservoir. Dulling potions decrease mantra damage and physical damage inflicted on someone else. Rejuvenating potions instantly restore your health. Invigorating potions restore your health over time. Focus enhancing potions increase your ether regeneration while still sacrificing a bit of your reservoir in the process. Your reservoir shouldn't matter since the regeneration doesn't stop even when your ether bar hits its max. Strengthening potions increase your damage, Castening increases your walk speed, Viscous decreases your base walk speed, Grueling inflicts negative health regeneration or poison, Disgusting inflicts instant damage, Steadfast increases posture maximum, Icky saps your ether over time, Buckling decreases posture maximum, Staggering increases posture damage that the individual affected takes, Soothing instantly restores your reservoir. Mind breaking decreases your sanity over time. Hardening increases your sanity over time. Now we're going to get into the secondary effects of a lot of these ingredients. But before that, I actually want to include a little fact. All of these ingredients have more than just two effects. The thing is, those additional effects are so minimal or just scripted to be the same as what you previously had, they shouldn't really pull much weight into your potion making adventure. I just want to include that since it's always fun to learn more about the game you play. Saps and sticks are up in controversy over what they can do, but we'll get into that when there's something concretely known about them in the future. Now let's get into where we can find all of this stuff.
Reds are easy to find on Songseeker Islands, but there are also some next to the Guild Hall in Etris. Pomars are easy to find in the Songseeker Islands, but the outside of Etris has multiple Pomar trees as well. Ongos are on the three or more trees outside of Etris, as well as a couple trees in the Songseeker Islands. Plum fruits are the easiest to find by the outside of Etris. Browncaps, Goblettos, and Dentifilos are scattered throughout all of Etria. You can find them anywhere there. Beeswax are in the Etrian wilds by the cave to the docks and right outside the docks entrance. Bamboo can be easily found by the beach entrance of Arisia. Gathered wheat can be found all around the nomad camp in the Etrian wilds. Calabash can be found in the Etrian wilds as well as right outside of the Etrian palace. In all honesty, good luck finding some hot spots for Elestrian coral, and I'd say just find one and start server hopping the same spot or spots you know. I usually get my urchins by this wall within the city, or you could get them by the other wall outside of the city and near the entrance to the Temple of Hearts. Spider eggs can be found all over Arisia, but I like to get mine from the Mudskipper Cave. Blue caps can be found only in one room known as the Blue Cap Library. You can get in through either doing the Birdcage's puzzle or through a little obby in the Viper's Jaw. And that's about it. This is part two of the Alchemy Guide series. Some other important facts before I end this video are, to throw a potion, aim with your cursor and press E. Instant damage potions are based on the proximity of where the explosion took place. So, someone hit point blank by an instant damage potion is going to take more damage than the someone near hit by the cloud around the point of impact where the potion was hit. You also don't have to follow the recipes I made in the previous video. Those are just some of my personal potions I use, and I would actually like to emphasize that you should all experiment with your own potions, rather than just conforming to some meta that someone else made. Anyways, thanks, and have a wonderful day.